Welcome to the Florida Collegiate Summer League's 2013 General Manager Show. Throughout the next half hour, I will be speaking with the league's general managers who oversee and make the Florida League one of the best summer college leagues in the United States. We will be talking to four of the Florida League's team general managers, which include the College Park Freedom, the Orlando Monarchs, the Sanford River Rats, and the Winter Park Diamond Dogs. The league was founded in November 2003, and these general managers make sure they provide a place in the Sunshine State for top college players to play pure wood bat baseball against top-level competition. The Florida League has been named one of the top three leagues in the country by Baseball America and The Perfect Game. Welcome back to the 2013 Florida League General Manager Show. Right now I'm actually joined by uh, Mark Popkin. Uh, he's actually the uh, General Manager of the Orlando Mon Monarchs. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Jeff, thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Uh, tell me a little bit about your background, how you got involved with the Monarchs and the Florida League. I know that is uh, actually your, your, your second year, I believe. Yes. Beautiful. Um, well, I uh, grew up in Los Angeles area and I started working in baseball at a pretty young age. I worked for uh, a baseball agent named Eric Goldschmidt and I served as his uh, basic sole support staff and he taught me uh, all about it and I got the opportunity to work with a lot of inner city programs and helping our players with the marketing and those things and then I left and went up to Oregon and became a real estate real estate developer and uh, got back involved with baseball uh, after my wife went back to school and we moved down here uh, about six months ago. Cool. Um Besides your duties with the Monarchs, you were also involved with the uh, MLB um, Urban Youth Academy. Tell us a little bit about that and well, what that the, involves. Well, the Urban Youth Academy, um, there's six of them right now in the country, and Orlando is actually slated to be the first non-Major League Baseball city to have an Urban Youth Academy. And um, I got asked by Davey Johnson to help bring that back, uh, or bring it to Orlando, and so, um, we uh, decided that he, I could be that, and the best way I thought one of the things to do that with was to actually try and put uh, the Orlando Monarchs Baseball Club in there so that there's starting to be some activity there, and then I'm working on restoring it and trying to bring back a lot of life and activity there. We've got a lot of community groups that we're trying to bring there and kid programs, and um, I'm working with Major League Baseball to um, match their curriculum that they have for their urban youth academies which is basically trying to provide a free place to play baseball for inner city kids because of, there's been such a decline in um, baseball playing in, in the inner cities so um, the idea behind that also is that we are now right behind New Orleans uh, New Orleans got pushed ahead of us because they received some FEMA money and so we got pushed behind them. so we're probably about a year and a half to two years out from hopefully being able to put the Urban Youth Academy there at Tinker Field. That's awesome. Um, now you actually uh, play your home games at the historic Tinker Field um, right there in uh, downtown Orlando. Uh, what's it like knowing that you're on the same field with dozens of Hall of Famers um, and, and it's also used for spring training back in the 50s and 60s. Um, and kind of just tell us a little bit about how your players react when they find out the, the historic value of what Tinker Field brings. Well, I think um, Tinker Field actually had every Hall of Famer prior to 1989 that played at Tinker Field because it's one of the only places left that has uh, baseball still being played at it. So, you know, the Babe Ruths and the Willie Mazes and the Hank Aarons have all played in this, and Jackie Robinson, they've all played on this field. And, and you know, the players, uh, we, give, they, we, give, they give a, we give them a lot of history of that when they get on there because I think it helps them sort of realize that it's an honor to play on this field. We're not just sort of playing at, you know, just a no-name place. I mean, this right. is this is a, there's a ton of history there, and even Michael Jordan played there when he played for the the minor league team for the White Sox. So, it's a it's a unique opportunity for collegiate players to have that opportunity. I think it's a fantastic thing for all um, all of them to be able to be a part of. Uh, what are the, some of the local businesses you have uh, that are going to be sponsoring the Monarchs this year? Well, um, Bright House has been one of our major contributors. They um, We've cr created a Bright House employee day, so all the Bright House employees are going to have a day out at the ballpark. And uh, they're also helping support uh, an event that we're doing, which is the Black Men's Health and Wellness Fe uh, Festival. Um, we uh, have OUC as a sponsor. Flippers is a sponsor. Flippers is going to have pizza for you guys again at the games. Um, Chick-fil-A is going to be a sponsor, so they're going to be involved. And, we're kind of tying it into some of our in-game promotions and stuff like that. They're going to hopefully uh, sponsor our 
our chicken toss during one of the innings and, and uh, have it be brought to you by Chick-fil-A. And, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a great time at the ballpark. Sounds year. like a great time. Um, what can we expect from the, uh, the Monarchs uh, in this 2013 season? Listen, I, I, everywhere I'm going, people keep telling me we've got the best team out there. Now, I don't know whether they're just saying that to make me feel better or whether we actually do. You know, obviously the players have to do it on the field, but we've we spent a lot of time trying to get the best players out there and trying to bring awesome baseball. And uh, we're really, really excited to get started. Our opening day is on uh, Thursday, June 6th at Tinker Field. Uh, we have a game the day before uh, where we open up on the road. but. Uh, we're getting a lot of things going for opening day, and it should be a really, really good time, and we're looking forward to it. Cool. We are looking, definitely looking forward to the season. Good luck this year Thanks, on the, for the 2013 season, and uh, continue to you know, do all that you do in the community. We really appreciate no it. No problem. Thanks again. Mark Popkin, uh, General Manager for the Orlando Monarchs. We'll be right back here on the 2013 uh, Florida League General Manager Show, but first a message from Glenn Close. <music> One in six adults has a mental illness. And we face a stigma that can be as painful as the disease itself. Change a mind about mental illness, and you can change a life. Welcome back to the 2013 Florida League General Manager Show. We're actually joined right now by uh, Ricky Week Sr., who's actually the president of the Orlando Monarchs. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Pretty good so far. Fantastic. Welcome. Um, now, you've been involved with the Florida League for the past couple years now. Um, the Monarchs actually partnered with the Florida League back in 2012. What kind of inspired you to get involved with the baseball community here in Orlando? Oh, definitely um, the quality of the league. Uh, it's been around for a while. A lot of players, over 200 players have been drafted out of this league and um, in my travels and um, just dealing with baseball groups and companies and colleges around the country, I just thought this is the best place if we're going to do college baseball to expose our players to. Beautiful. Um, now, kind of a, a unique aspect about the Monarchs is that the majority of the players are, are from historically black colleges and universities. Um, what made you kind of want to model your team that way? Well, basically, um, you know, I have a, my oldest son, Ricky, playing for Milwaukee, uh, was a Southern University um, player, number one draft pick guy. Um, just going around the historically black colleges and, and the time that we did, it was very little exposure. Uh, a lot of the players um, in, uh, that attend black uh, colleges are not aware that there are baseball programs in black colleges. So I thought it would be best to give those colleges some exposure as well in hopes of uh, developing uh, a lot more uh, players in the future and also adding more Afro-Americans to the game of baseball. Now you mentioned your son Ricky, um, of course you also have uh, another son in the bigs as well, uh, uh, Jamal. Um, what are, uh, they're both major leaguers, uh, what's it like being the father of two star athletes like that and how does that experience kind of translate and try, kind of what you're trying to do with the Monarchs a little bit? Well, uh, basically, um, I mean, it's quite naturally, it is a tremendous experience to have two kids playing at, at that level. Um, love them both to death. Uh, Jamal and Ricky are, are behind everything that I'm doing. Um, we're a baseball family, generationally as well. Uh, my, uh, my father played in the Negro Leagues. And uh, so with all that baseball coming behind us and the history that we have and dealing with um, historically black colleges and that kind of thing, it enabled me to see that this is the right mix. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the right mix because, you know, Jackie Robinson did play for the Monarchs. Uh, Hank Aaron played for the Monarchs. Willie Mays played for the Monarchs. Most of your uh, affluent 
and talented black players did play for the Monarchs at some point in time in the days of the Negro Leagues. Um, they were very hard workers. Um, they practiced all the time. I wanted to have our Orlando Monarch team uh, in the same legacy. I wanted them hard hardworking. I wanted them coming prepared to play baseball, doing it the right way, mm -hmm. um, looking forward to getting to the major leagues. And so those were the things that kind of symbolized the monarchs of the past, but also in the future here, it's the ideal embodiment of baseball for, for the, today's culture. Now the monarchs are actually in their, uh, their, their second season. Um, what kind of do you expect um, after you've already established your roots, um, what kind of businesses and stuff like that do we have uh, to expect from the Monarchs this year? Well, um, basically, um, you know, we are active in our community. We are reaching out um, to as many sponsors as we can. As we can. Uh, some of our sponsors are, um, we have a pizza, Flipper's Pizza is, has been a great sponsor and supporter. Uh, we just bought on the Orlando Urban League, um, Orlando Utilities, um, our, our commissioners, uh, Daisy Lynham, our uh, commissioner uh, Ings, and uh, commissioner, I can't think of his name at this point, but um, those commissioners are really supporting and getting behind the Monarchs and, and really inspiring uh, baseball in the downtown Orlando uh, area. Uh, commissioner Ortiz is the guy that I miss. Okay. But, those guys are, are, are just great supporters and opening up uh, doorways for us to get those sponsorships and get baseball active in the downtown area. Now that's kind of off the field for the Monarchs. What about on the field? Uh, do, you, do you have any guys that you're looking forward to coming back that you see can kind of maybe take that next step uh, for the future? Well, I'll tell you what, um, we have a very talented team this year. Uh, we have some talented players from all around the country. We have players from Carolina. We have players from here in Florida. We have players from Alabama, Texas, um, players from Arkansas, and players from Puerto Rico. Uh, we go everywhere. We just scan that internet and try to find who's hot in college. So we put a very good product on the field. One of the important things that I thought was important as far as representing the Monarchs is that the product that we put on the field, the coaching staff that we put on the field to make our team the best team in the Florida Collegiate League, uh, we have Jeff Sisneski, who has major league pitching experience uh, with the, with the uh, Texas Rangers there. We also have uh, Tom McCraw, who has uh, 35 years of major league hitting experience um, with the uh, Baltimore Orioles, Pittsburgh Pirates, New York Mets, um, and also our head coach, which is Ken Norman this year, mm -hmm. who uh, has also been a professional player in the uh, Texas Rangers organization. We put this group together so that we can win the league. That's what it's all about. It's about playing hard. It's about great expectations. It's about pushing players to their potential so that they can embody the Monarch spirit, being pushed to your potential. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah it's, it sounds like an all-star cast full of tons of major leaguers and stuff like that. So That's right, yeah. Definitely good luck to you uh, this year for 2013. Also, best Thank wishes you. for Ricky and uh, Jamal going forward um, through uh, sure. the rest of their season this year as well. Uh, Ricky Weeks, Sr., president of the Orlando Monarchs. We'll be right back here on the 2013 Florida League General Manager Show. But first, a message from Orange County Mayor Teresa Jacobs. Every 15 minutes, someone commits suicide. The Mental Health Association wants you to know that depression touches everyone, from children to seniors. If you see signs of depression or hopelessness in the people you love, call the Mental Health Association for free information on where to get help, or call 211. I'm Orange County Mayor Teresa Jacobs, and it's okay to get help. Welcome back to the 2013 Florida League General Manager Show. I'm Jeff Schneider, joined now by John Welton, who's actually the general manager of the uh, Sanford River Rats. Uh, Mr. Welton, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Now Glad to be here. Oh, good, great to have you. Uh, you've actually been in the Florida League. Uh, this is your third year. Uh, how'd you kind of get your start with the uh, River Rats? Well, I was uh, on the advisory board for the, uh, the Diamond Dogs, and then the position came open late uh, in the spring of 2011, and I... And 
it was an interest of mine. I, I enjoyed doing it. It was back to baseball. It was back to the Sanford Stadium where I played college baseball. It was good stuff. Cool. So uh, kind of your background a little bit in baseball, uh, who did you play college for? I played uh, Seminole Community College, and cool. then I had a, a brief stay up at Florida, and then uh, moved on. Nice. Good old Gainesville. Yeah. Um, now, you enjoyed kind of immediate success with a championship in your first year in uh, 2011, followed by a team record for attendance uh, last year. Um, what are some of your goals, and how do you kind of expound on those things for 2013? Well, 2011 was an exciting year. We um, uh, didn't really have a, the greatest regular season. We made a nice push into the playoffs and then won the championship at Tropicana, and it was, it was a nice, exciting time. It was a great thing for the city of Sanford mm -hmm. to, uh, to win the championship, the mayor really uh, extended himself and, and started boasting about it, put the trophy up on his trophy shelf, and he was proud of it. And in 2012, we, uh, we started out with a really, really nice roster. We started out with the season, and then we had a couple of injuries as, as things affect baseball. And, you know, the enthusiasm in the city of Sanford is, is great for the, for the uh, team and the attendance, and we had some really nice promotions. And um, we didn't win the championship. So we made a coaching change, and the mayor wants the tr trophy back, and uh, that's what we're set out to do this year. Now, um, you talk a little bit about the, uh, the passion that's uh, kind of brought in Sanford. Um, the River Rats have actually been around since the inception of the league back in 2004. Um, a little bit about how the Sanford community has kind of embraced and, and helped the Rats enjoy success for the past 10 years. It's been a great partnership with the city. Um, the city supports us from a uh, city standpoint, and then the residents and the chamber uh, outreach to everybody knows who the Sanford River Rats are. They, um, they come out to the ballpark and they support the, the team. And, and within the community, you always hear the buzz during the, the spring and going into the summer. And this year, I think that the, uh, the city's rallying around the River Rats as a, uh, as a baseball team now. And, and after 10 years, it's just, been a, uh, it's just been a part of the city. And now it's, it's just part of what you do in Sanford as you go out and support the River Rats. And speaking of uh, nights on going out and supporting the River Rats, uh, it seems like Thursday night seems to be a real popular <laughs> night out there. Um, what's going on on Thursday nights? We have uh, Thirsty Thursday, Dollar Beer, Yingling, oh. the proud sponsor of the, uh, the FCSL. And, uh, it, you know, it brings them out. You know, they, other parks have bladder busters. We have Dollar Beer. We have uh, Thirsty Thursdays. And I'll tell you what, it, it packs the house. It's a lot of good energy, a lot of good fun. Still family atmosphere. We right. keep the family atmosphere constant through the year, and um, it's it's a lot of fun. I can only imagine with Dollar Yinglings. That sounds like an incredible <laughs> deal. I will see you on Thursdays in Sanford, Excellent. Uh, guaranteed. Um, where can fans find out more about the team and the schedule for the upcoming 2013 season? They can go to the uh, FCSL website at uh, floridaleague.com and go right to the team page. And we have many other community nights and uh, and support of nice. We have $2 Margarita Fridays as well. Hmm. So um, Saturday nights are an extremely fun time because uh, we're going to have a pub crawl through the city, and uh, that'll be fun on July 13th. So, but there's a lot of other promotions. You go to the, right to the website at floridaleague.com and then come to the Sanford River Rat team page. Sounds like a great time out there. Make sure uh, to go check them out, the Sanford River Rats, and good luck on your 2013 season this year. Thank you, sir. John Welton, General Manager for the Sanford River Rats. We'll be right back here on the 2013 Florida League General Manager Show. But first, a message from Dick Batchelor, philanthropist and activist. As a community activist, I've seen our citizens go through an immense amount of stress and strain over the past few years. This stress and strain can really cause problems in families and their quality of life. If you find yourself taking out your frustrations on your loved ones, seek help. Talk to a professional or a friend. Don't go it alone. I am Dick Bachelor, and it's okay to get help. This message was made possible by the Community Health Impact Council. Welcome back to the 2013 Florida League General Manager Show. I'm Jeff Schneider. Joined now by uh, Cody uh, Leifer, actually the uh, General Manager uh, of the Winter Park Diamond Dogs. Cody, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you, sir. Um, you've actually been involved with the Florida League for about two years now. Yes. Uh, just give us a little bit of your background and how you got involved with the Florida League. Well, I uh, grew up in the area, uh, went to high school at Lake Highland Prep. Uh, my coach was Kevin Davidson, the coach for Winter Park. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, when I got the opportunity to intern last year, I, I took it and 
must have done something right because they asked me back for a second year as a GM. So that's a be it's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful thing. Um, you're not only the the GM. Uh, I'm sorry, you're not the only GM uh, for your mm -hmm. team. You also uh, share the duties with um, Michael Elliott. Uh, how does having two GMs kind of help? And and what's the unique uh, uh, kind of a situation that you have there? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Michael's a great guy. He's a uh, done a lot of good stuff for us, not only for the team, but for the league as, as a whole already in his short time with the league so far. And uh, this season, he's really focusing more on the, the sales and the promotional nights for the team, whereas I'm operations, so I'll be making sure the game's running smoothly. Uh, it's really, having two GMs is a really big advantage that the other teams don't have. We, we can cover a lot of ground much faster and more in depth, and it helps that we work really well together, so. Definitely, that's always an important key to be able to uh you know, work well together. Um, you guys, the Diamond Dogs are always consistently at the top of the league. Um, what can we expect uh, from uh, the, the Winter Park team this season? Well, just that, and we're gonna have, we have another great, great team. We got uh, returning players, uh, the reigning MVP, Michael Danner, and reigning Cy Young, Evan Antonelli. So we got a bunch of good guys, top level talent, great coaching staff. So it's bound to lead to some good games, some fun nights at the ballpark. Do you got any new, uh, new blood kind of coming in uh, that you haven't had before? Yeah, I mean, we got some guys from Texas that's going to be awesome. A uh, guy from California, so we got some good players coming in. Cool. Uh, do we have any special kind of promotional nights um, that the fans should plan to attend and make sure they mark on their calendar? Yes, uh, Pink at the Park to support uh, breast cancer awareness is June 12th. Uh, the infamous Bark at the Park for the Winter Park Diamond Dogs where you can bring your dog to the game is uh, June 15th. And Thirsty Thursdays, every Thursday, dollar beer. And Winter Park has the most Thirsty Thursdays. So. Dollar beer, can't oh, yeah. really beat that. And oh. I'm, I'm sure it's from our proud sponsor, uh, Yingling, Yingling yes. Lager yes. as well too, uh, which are uh, great, great people. Um, where can fans check out a Diamond Dogs game this uh, this summer? Actually? We play at Alphonse Stadium at Harper Shepherd Field, home of the Rollins College Tars. Uh, if you don't know where it is, it's 801 Orange Avenue in Warner Park, Florida. Beautiful, cool. Well, uh, Cody Leifer, uh, co-GM of the uh, Winter Park Diamond Dogs. Thank you very much for joining us here on the yeah, program once again, today. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure, sir. We'll be right back on the 2013 uh, Florida League General Manager Show. But first, a message from Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer. Some of our citizens are experiencing very stressful times. We're pleased that the Mental Health Association has brought business, government, and medical professionals together to provide free information to help families and children. If you're having a problem, don't go it alone. I'm Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer, and it's okay to get help. This message was made possible by Ron Sachs Communications, a leading public affairs firm and proud sponsor of 211. <laughs> Welcome back to the 2013 Florida League General Manager Show. I'm Jeff Schneider, joined here by Jay Hatch. Um, General Manager for the College Park Freedom. Uh, Jay, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Good to have you. Um, now, this is actually your third year in total uh, with the Florida League. Um, just a little bit about um, how you've been involved, and obviously you've been more than just a GM um, in the past as well. Uh, yes, sir. I, I started in 2008 as the uh, public address announcer for the Winter Park Diamond Dogs. Spent some time working with them. Um, it was an internship and while I was at UCF as a student, and then worked with the UCF Athletics Department for a little while. Came back and now I'm director of marketing and uh, work with some social media stuff as well as the GM for the College Park Freedom. So a little, little bit of everything, but you know it's it's enjoyable and have a good time. So. Definitely the jack of all trades of the Florida League. Um, this will be the first season for the Freedom in College Park. Uh, how has the transition in the new community kind of gone so far for the team? Transition has been fantastic. We've been accepted um, very gracefully by the the high school, uh, Bishop Moore High School. We're going to play our home games. College Park uh, as a whole is outstanding. They're they're a very involved community. They just want to they want to be out and doing stuff every day. Uh, so they're they're you know they're always looking for stuff to do and adding a baseball team to that community has been great. So yeah, it's fantastic. Great facilities over there, at Bishop Moore. So you definitely have to go check out uh, the, the fields over there and also the, the area is great too to just walk around, get a bite to eat, and then you know check out the game. Um, the Freedom are kind of unique in that they're actually a Christian-based um, ministry team. Talk about some of the groups that you work with, uh, the events that your players have been taking part in, and then any other ways that your team kind of serves the community. Okay, we've uh, we've actually carried over a partnership last year from uh, with the Central Florida Christian Chamber. The businesses and nonprofits uh, within their organization have been great. They they come out, they do fundraisers at the ballpark, they also uh, help sponsor the team. 
uh, outside of the, uh, off the field, our players also serve with the Christian Service Center. That's one of the uh, organizations that is involved with the chamber. And uh, we, we serve members of the community uh, through that. And then also the Boys and Girls Club, something we do actually league-wide. Um, players go out and teach kids at the Boys and Girls Club the game of baseball uh, twice a week. And then at the end of the season, we bring them all up to Sanford Memorial Stadium and do a championship game. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit of everything. We want to make sure the players are getting a good balance of, uh, of on-field um, action as well as off-the-field community service because it's, it's something we'll have to do at the next level. Definitely. Now, you do have kind of a marketing background um, you spoke about before. I'm sure you got some awesome events planned for the season. Uh, tell us a little about the promotions that you have uh, lined up. Yeah, we're really excited, uh, mainly with the Christian uh, background of the team. We're going to do Faith and Family Night every Sunday. We're going to offer $5 off the family tickets. So um, it'll be $20 for uh, four tickets, four hot dogs, four sodas, four chips. You're going to get the whole family into the ballpark. And then also, if you bring your uh, church bullets into the ballpark, we're going to have free admission for that. You know, we're encouraging folks that are at church to come see the Christian team. Um, and we'll also do, uh, through FCA and our partnership with you stuff, we'll be giving away T-shirts, and the FCA is going to provide us some, uh, some speakers at the ballpark to deliver a Christian message to not only the fans, but also the team before the game. Uh, we're also looking at doing a Bark in the Park on the 22nd of June. We're encouraging our fans to uh, bring, their, bring their dogs to the ballpark and enjoy a nice day out in, the, in uh, College Park. And then also a, a golf tournament that day with, with Dubstrad, one of our, our sponsors. Uh, they put together a nice package for us to, to get everybody out there and have some fun before the game and, and then after the game with the animals. So. It'll be exciting. Cool. Yeah, Dubs is a great golf course, too. One of the oldest courses, actually, I believe, in Central Florida, uh, which is really, really nice. Um, what are some of the goals that you have for the, free, uh, the Freedom um, as they enter their first year in College Park? Well, we really want to focus on being a part of the community. Uh, moving to the community, like I said, has been, has been fantastic. But we want to make sure that, that we're doing our part to enhance the community as well as, as uh, you know, have, let people come out to the games and enjoy themselves. You know, we've got our, our, our sponsors, uh, 3-H has jumped, jumped on board again this year to help us out. Uh, the Christian Chamber, as I mentioned before, Youth Stuff doing the t-shirts. The College Park Partnership, who have been outstanding. They, they have events, uh, three big events a year, but they're also going to be very involved with the, with the team. And uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, BOGO Magazine is helping out. They're, they're helping get the word out, get our tickets out there. And then uh, Dubs Red Golf Course, uh, of course, is uh, a very, very big sponsor. And they've, they've joined us to, you know. And, hey, you know, we'll have some putting competitions set up at the ballpark and do our golf tournament. But a little bit of everything. We want to be involved with them and as, as they are involved with us so we can make it a great partnership. Yeah, great sponsors. The field kind of backs up right there on a Dubs Red golf course as well, too. Absolutely. Jay Hatch, uh, general manager, jack of all trades uh, here for the, uh, the Florida League. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on the program today. Absolutely. Thank you. We'll be right back on the 2013 Florida League general manager show. But first, a message from John Hitt, president of UCF. The University of Central Florida is a leader in providing on-campus mental health counseling as part of the comprehensive services we provide students. In Central Florida, the Mental Health Association provides free mental health information to those who need it. They brought together professionals from private practice, hospitals, and government to assist people suffering from depression and other mental health issues. I'm UCF President John Hitt, and it's okay to get help. For CSB News 9, I'm Tatum Keenan. And I'm Jason Marsh. Good night. Clear. At Connecticut School of Broadcasting, we've placed thousands of grads, not with books and theory, but with hands-on training, affordable training in months, not years. Connecticut School of Broadcasting, the proven path to the media career you want. Call 1-800-TV-RADIO or log on to GoCSB.com. Welcome back to the 2013 Florida League General Manager Show. The Florida League's 10th season is already in full swing. Check FloridaLeague.com for your favorite team schedule. The league has had over 200 players drafted so far in the league's first nine years. Don't miss out on the opportunity to see the future of baseball being played right in your own backyard. For more information on your favorite local teams, check out www.FloridaLeague.com, Facebook.com backslash Florida League, and make sure to follow us on Twitter at the FCSL. I would like to thank Orlando Monarchs President Ricky Weeks and all of the general managers for taking time out of their busy schedules to join us today and wish them luck on their respective seasons. Also, a big thank you to the sponsors who have made all of this possible. Bright House Sports Network, Yingling Lager, Kimco Realty, and the Orlando Ale House. Be on the lookout for the next edition of the Florida League Show, coming your way soon. I'm Jeff Schneider, and we'll see you at the ballpark.